So thank you and good afternoon. Um, today I'm going to talk about the project Jupyter or Jupyter Notebook. So I think that you already know something about me, so I will skip this part. I just want to um, underline that if you are like interested in education, uh, both for adults and for kids, just just ping me. So what is this talk about? Um, I think I will talk about five points. Um, the first one will be about IPython, so a uh, short version of the story of this, this project. Uh, then I will talk about the Jupyter project and the big split in this project. Okay, thank you. Uh, what is Jupyter today? And what can you do with Jupyter? And I think I will have um, a demo with the Jupyter notebook. So, at the beginning there was just IPython. Um, Sorry. Okay. Um, so this is the logo of the project. Uh, it, at the beginning, it was just a uh, super uh, Python rep on steroid, I will say. Um, the project, it's, it's very old, more than 15 years ago. Um, the project started um, with Fernando Perez, he's still in charge of this project. And, uh, well, Later I will put the, um, the slides online and you can find the first version of this project. So what, what was and what is still IPython? It's, it's just a shell, as you can see, uh, with a lot of color and it's, it's like an enchanted version of the, the Python. And this is a uh, IPython shell inside a JupyterLab terminal. So you can see like the the shell inside. Uh, that's that's just a web page. So before 2014, uh, everything was was together. So, IPython was IPython notebook, IPython kernel. Uh, everything was just under this project. But the project wasn't related just to, to Python. Uh, you could use R, you could use Julia, uh, you could use also Scala. So uh, they decided, okay, that's, that's too much. Um, we want to make a new step. And they decided to create this project, Project, project Jupyter. So in 2014, during SciPy, um, they said, okay, this is we will have the last version of PyPython notebook, and from this time, um, everything is going under the name of Jupyter project. So you will have like the Jupyter notebook, um, all the um, kernels will be under the Jupyter project. Um, the only thing that will remain is the um, IPython part, that it's like right now is the Python kernel. And uh, all the protocols that uh, right now they're like used for for the Python stuff. So uh, as I said, the problem it was was this. So we are having this huge project, and it's not just used by Python people, by the Python community. So why do we have to call this just say Python? So they come they come with this new name, Jupiter. As you can imagine, it's it's from the planet. It's from the Jupiter planet. But it's also inspired by the, I will say, the main languages that they were using at the time. So Julia, Python, and, and R. So what is Jupiter right now? What, when you think about Jupiter, what, apart from the notebook, what there is inside this, this huge project? Well, there are many things. Uh, as I said, when, you, when we talk generally about Jupyter, we think about the Jupyter notebook. But there is a lot um, inside the Jupyter repository. So there is the Jupyter notebook, it's like the front end. Uh, there is the Jupyter app, and it's like a Jupyter notebook for organization. Uh, there is the Jupyter lab, it's like the, nest, the next version of the front end. Uh, there is NBGrade, if you want to use the Jupyter notebook for education. 
there is the Jupyter dashboard. I think it's something very similar to our Shiny or something like this. There is the MB Fever. Uh, it's uh, to see the notebook online. And there is the NB Convert. And it's just a plugin to convert your, uh, your notebook in something else. It could be PDF, it could be the slides like this. And there is the link for the Jupyter repository. So what is IPython right now? Well, uh, before 2014, it was a really big project. But right now, it's, uh, as you have seen at the beginning, just the shell and uh, the kernel, the Python kernel that is used by, by the Jupyter project. But it's, I mean, you can use this kernel, this IPython kernel, also with um, other front end like uh, Interact.io, and also you can use PyCharm to um, code directly with the IPython shell. So, what is the Jupyter Notebook? The Jupyter Notebook is the front end. It's what you see when you launch a Jupyter instance, and it's this. So this is a Jupyter notebook running a Python tree kernel. Um, it's it's just a web application, so you just uh, put the, your website or I don't know localhost, and you will see this. So as you can see on the top, there is the Python logo, there is um, near logout, there is the Python version. You can use Python three or Python two. Um, I think that this or the next version will be the last version for Python 2. Um, so as you can see, you can just type inside the cells and you can press like the play button and you will get the output. So it's, it's super easy to have like a fast prototyping system using Jupyter Notebook. You can also, um, add some um, text inside the Jupyter Notebook. You can use HTML, uh, Markdown, just normal text, and that's it. But as I said at the beginning, it's not just about Python, because you can use also R inside. Uh, so it's, um, so there's not like Python in the middle. You're uh, talking directly with, with R, and you get directly the output for, from R. But, you can also have more than one kernel on the same machine. So you can decide if you want to launch the, your Jupyter notebook with, I don't know, Python 3, Python 2, um, Julia, R, on the same machine. So as I said, you can use Jupyter with many different kernels. Um, right now, I think there are more than 40. And uh, of course, you can write your kernel. I think that the, the most used are IPython, iJulia, and uh, the R kernel. And uh, because they are like the one uh, that are like developed by the community, by the Jupyter community. So the main part of this, this talk, what can you do with Jupyter? Um, who is uh, using Jupyter for doing data science here? No one? Okay. Two, three, okay. So, yeah, you can use Jupyter for many things. Uh, education, fast prototyping, uh, data science. I think the right way to do data science, probably. Uh, research, <coughs> slides like this, books, and blogs also. So what about education? Um, well, there is this non-profit foundation called uh, NumFocus, all the PyData related projects are under this, this nonprofit foundation. And uh, they also have this software carpentry and data carpentry. They teach about programming, basically. And they use the Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter Notebook, Mo, Jupyter Notebook is also uh, widely used uh, for the online courses. Um, if you had any course related to Python or data science, probably you use uh, Jupyter Notebook. And, uh, well, it's also used in professional courses like by O'Reilly. Fast prototyping. Um, 
you run your Jupyter notebook and then you start to code. That's all. You, you don't need to do something else. You get the output directly from the, the browser. Uh, you can change the code and you can rerun the cell again. And you can have um, uh, direct assets to the um, documentation in this way. So question mark and the name of the function or the name of the method. Well, what about data science? Uh, yeah. I think that if we, I mean, I think that right now Python is like the main language for doing data science. Um, maybe there is something about R, but I think it's more related to statistics. Uh, there is also the Java word, but I think it's more related to Hadoop and, and Spark right now. But with the, uh, if we consider also the deep learning word, I think that Python is really the future here. And uh, well, uh, Jupyter Notebook is the way to do data science uh, with Python. All the libraries are well integrated. You can use scikit-learn, you can use pandas, and you can also plot inside uh, the Jupyter Notebook. So you can get something like this. So just a few lines of code, and you can plot directly inside the, um, the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, so what you see is it's like my slide, but this is like the output of the Jupyter Notebook. And what about research? So have you heard about the gravitational waves? So do you know that they use uh, the Jupyter no Notebook to analyze the, the data? Uh, so this is the link uh, to see all the data and all the code that they used. And it's, uh, it's super interesting. And what about the slides? So you can just write your Jupyter Notebook uh, with the code, with the text, and you can just convert this using the plugin and be convert and having the slides in this way. And what about books, for example? So you can find books uh, made entirely with the Jupyter Notebook, like in this case, by Jake Vanderplas. And yeah, it's super interesting because he, you can find the code and all this stuff just, just online, just on his uh, GitHub repository. Um, and the most uh, curious thing is that you can also um, make uh, public, uh, like um, PR requests to his repository if you find like, I don't know, some typo or things like this. So it's uh, like, a new way to write books. And also you can use uh, the Jupyter Notebook to write articles and blogs, so like with Pelican or with Nicola. So what about other cool stuff? So for example, you can um, publish your uh, Jupyter Notebook directly on GitHub. They will be rendered by the, um, by the GitHub engine. There is also this cool project called MyBinder, and but it's just for ephemeral uh, notebook. But you will have like a, a Docker machine running Jupyter notebook. And there are a lot of very very cool projects, uh, always related to Jupyter. Uh, there is this repository called Jupyter Incubator, and there there are a lot of very cool stuff going on there. So where I can find more info, where you can find more info about this? Well, there is the jupyter.org website. Of course, the PyData meetup and the conferences, and uh, of course, the Python conferences. So it's where you meet people that are using Jupyter Notebook. So it's time for a demo. The goal is to have a uh, Jupyter Notebook running on this machine. Uh, you just need to open your terminal. Uh, I'm going to use Miniconda, um, but I already have Miniconda on my system, but these are the, the, the commands. I will just create a new virtual ham inside my machine. I think that you can see this. Okay. 
Okay. So I'm just creating a new virtual ham with Python 3. Okay, I'm going to activate the virtual ham. I'm going to install Jupyter. I'm very lucky that the Wi-Fi connection is working. So, and this is the Jupyter notebook. So you can just um, create new notebook inside. You can change the name, and you can just start to write whatever you want. So you have different types of cell, like code or markdown, for example. So you can use uh, the Jupyter Notebook in this way. And uh, Yes, you should see your notebook. And uh, what about the Jupyter Lab? So we can install the Jupyter Lab. Close this part before. So this is, uh, this is like the new front end. It will be the future of the Jupyter Notebook. So right now, as you can see, uh, oh sorry, as, it, as you can read, it's a very alpha preview. But I think they plan to release the, uh, the version number one before the end of this year. And well, you have a lot more. You have like the files. Um, you can also have the text editor. Uh, you can do a lot of more stuff here. So it, it's much more complete. Um, so I will say that it's, it's, it's like really the future. You also have like the shell. And I think you can also compose like your ID. So back to the slide, this is the future, the Jupyter future. And as I said, Jupyter Lab is the evolution of the Jupyter notebook. And gradually it will uh, become the new front end. So that's all, thank you. This is really fascinating and there's a lot happening in, in this community. Yeah. Uh, we have a number of questions. Before we get to them, uh, let me use the moderator privilege and ask you one. Um, sometimes when, when notebooks are used for things like reproducible science, yes. uh, there may be external dependencies uh, that uh, you know, the script in the notebook is using. Are there any plans to, to standardize this, uh, standardize this in, in any ways, either integrate that with uh, a container solution or something else where you would have everything, including those dependencies, so you could just rerun this in a, in a reproducible way? So there is this project called mybinder.org, my binder and it's doing this. So you have like the Docker file, the requirement uh, file from, I don't know, that you use generally with pipe, and that's all, and your Jupyter notebook. So he creates the machine uh, from the Docker file, installing the requirements that you need. So it's basically one command away uh, to, to... Yes, there is... Uh, if you check this project, my bander, uh -huh. uh, you will find also on some GitHub repository, launch my bander. 
-huh. So you can launch directly the Jupyter Notebook from uh, GitHub. OK. So uh, it's, it's super cool. Uh, does this account for dependencies that may change in the future? Like it's pointing to a tar file, and that tar file will disappear from the internet? Because for reproducible science, uh, this is pretty well, important. I think you can set the version inside the requirement. So you can say just, I don't know, scikit-learn version 1 or version 2. OK. So, so you can uh, set like the, um, the versioning of, the, of your system in this way. And if it's not here in five years, scikit that version, is it like you know, content hashing or something that you could po point to? Because if you're talk talking long term, in terms of science, is there any way to address that? Um, I think you can do this with the Docker images. So you can just store the images, and you can save the images in, in this way. Okay. And then you can just rerun the, uh, the Docker image. Uh -huh. We example. have a number of questions from, from Slido, so let's, let's get to them. Ready? Okay. All right. Can you version control the notebooks? So this, for now, is a big problem, because a, a notebook at the end is just a JSON file, and it's not so easy to use GitHub with this. But they're trying to resolve this problem. Um, maybe not officially, but uh, I mean, there are a lot of people that are working on this. So maybe you can uh, find some, let's say, side project. Uh, but yes, I think that in the next months, we are going to find a solution for this. Next one. Can you convert the Jupyter slides into PDF? You can. Quick one. <laughs> what about security? Again, question about security. Or authentication. Is it safe to run Jupyter Notebook server on the public web? So before the last release of uh, Jupyter, um, yes and no, because you had to just connect to your machine. So it was like a, a website, an open website. But from the last release, um, you have you need a token, so you see this token from the um, from the console from the terminal, and you need to type this token. So if I'm going to connect, okay. So let's do it in this way. Okay, so if I connect directly to the Jupyter um, without following the link, this link is going to ask for a token. So before the last release was different, so I could just connect directly without any kind of security system. But from the last release, I need to use this token. So if I put the token like here, I get access to the Jupyter notebook. If you open it again, will you also get access? Uh, yes, because it's like saved. I think that uh, after this, you uh, it's saved like a cookie inside your browser. But if I use like a different browser, oh. you need to um, repeat the same procedure. Okay, so it avoids man in the middle. Uh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. But you can also set a password if you want. It's it's more related to the kind of uh, system that you want to have. I mean. Uh, if you run the Jupyter Notebook locally, just on your local host, it's not such a big problem. Uh, but if you run this, um, I don't know, like inside your, your university, for example, there is Jupyter App as a project for this. And you can use, like, uh, I don't know, Google for the authentication or uh, GitHub. What is the name, name of it again? Um, Jupyter Hub. Jupyter Hub. Okay. Yes. Got it. Very cool, thank you. Um, where is the Jupyter project going? Is there a roadmap? What issues will the developers focus on in the future? Well, there is a roadmap. And uh, I think you can find everything online. So as I said, it's, uh, the Jupyter project is formed by many projects. So related to the Jupyter notebook, for example, you can find the roadmap for the next releases. It's everything on GitHub. So some good bedtime reading. Yes. Uh, have you used Jupyter to make this presentation? How easy was it? So it's, it's super easy. Um, uh, 
the main problem is that you, I mean, you're programming, you're like writing Python, you also write text. Uh, the problem is that then you need to use JavaScript. <laughs> There's source code as a follow-up question. Uh, yes, I will put the, the Jupyter Notebook online. Um, I just wanted to answer about this slide part. So this is like the command that you have to type just to convert uh, the Jupyter Notebook. This is the name. Any chance to make it a little bigger so that people in the back can see? Like big enough? Thank you. Okay, so this is like the name of the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, as, as I said before, you have like this plugin called NB Convert. You can convert to many things, slides, PDF. And um, so in this case, it will convert to um, slides and it will serve the slides. So it's, it's, I think it's easy, you just need to set, you have just different type of cell, like slides, sub-slides, um, notes, because for example, what you see, it's different because I also have this, this part. So it's, it's, I will say, really professional because you can like take your time, you also can see the notes. So it's, it's, it's a good way for me to, to prepare slides. Of course, you, you don't have like the same control of, uh, I don't know, Keynote or Google Slides. Uh, but you can just write HTML and you can prepare the slides in this way. Is it possible to use it as a way to build fancy static generated websites? Does it plug into CI easily? Uh, so, I'm not so sure about this, but I'm pretty sure you can use the Jupyter Notebook, so you can prepare the Jupyter Notebook, and then you can just um, use a web uh, uh, like static web site generator to generate a website from this. So for example, I, I'm using this with uh, Nicola. So you can just write markdown and your code, and then you will get like the web page. Is it possible to use it? Oh, just asked it. <laughs> could, uh, could you make this into a desktop application like Atom uh, is a JavaScript application? Uh, yes, uh, but it's a different project. It's called um, Interact.io. Um, so it's, it's like a um, standalone web application based on Node.js, I think. And I mean, the main point is that the Jupyter Notebook is just the front end. So you have like some kind of API calls to the kernel, and you can just do this with uh, any kind of front end. You can use PyCharm, for example. So yes, you have like a des desktop application to to use the IPython kernel, for example. So the project is called. And so this is the the project, and it's it's a kind of. Uh, Jupyter Notebook for the desktop. When you do large-scale explora exploration, do you somehow extract useful functionality into modules or keep everything as one long vertical list? Hmm. So the point is that you can do fast prototyping with Jupyter Notebook, but then you can just export uh, the Python code. So after you check that everything is working, you can just export the Python code. Can we place breakpoints in Jupyter for debugging? Uh, well, that's another problem for the Jupyter Notebook because it's really, uh, it's not easy for now to debug the code. So um, yeah, probably it's better to, as I said, do fast prototyping with Jupyter and then uh, put the code inside, I don't know, your normal test background, for example. And the last question, specifically asked about prototyping. How does it compare to Zeppelin for data science, and how about prototyping? So I'm not really an expert of uh, Apache Zeppelin. I think this is the name of the project. Um, I think that they, they are targeting to different kind of people. 
um, because with Zeppelin, you, I mean, it's a Java project. One of the cool stuff is that you can use different languages at the same time, so you can write like Java and Python inside the same notebook, and you cannot do this with Jupyter because you need to open a new notebook uh, with a different kernel. Uh, so this is super cool. And, uh, but for example, I prefer the front end of the Jupyter Lab and not the one from the Apache Zeppelin. And, but as I said, I, I'm not a big expert of the, the Zeppelin, so I don't know how it works there for the fast prototyping or for the testing. That was our last question. Thank you so much. This was Christian Barra. Thank you.